Well, well, well. Look who came crawling back. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Well, you know what? We should probably kick things off the right way. G'day, fellas. Welcome to FFA. It is back. It is beautiful. It is big and it is bold. And boy, oh boy, have we got ourselves a game here today. Now, before I get into it, I want to just start by letting you guys know this is going to be an FFA, but it's also going to be a call for help. I'm going to need your help. I need you to get on the drum. I need you to get on the horn. Anyway, we'll talk about that later. Let's introduce our players for today. Starting off on the east side of the map in the color of orange, playing as the Ottomans, it's Core. Yep, yep. We had to invite Core, unfortunately. And on the south side of the map in the color blue, playing as the Juicy Legacy, we've got Baltoon. Just above him. I guess you could probably put him at your middle of the clock position in the color green, playing as the Deli Salt. No, we got Avery. Over on that west side of the map, playing as the purple Joan of Arc. It's Beastie. Towards Beastie's top side, playing in the color pink as the Ottomans. We've got Dragovan. Above him, in the color red, playing as the English Don Ardy. And just below him, over towards the east side, playing in the yellow as the Chinese. Actually, no, I take that back. This is the Juicy Legacy. We've got Baltoon. And last but not least, playing on the east side of the map in arguably the best spot right here. I like this position. Playing as the English, of course. We've got a hamster on a wheel, a.k.a. Corvinus One. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. We are here. We are preparing because, as you know, FFA is back. FFA is coming back, but this time, it's going to be good. It's going to be real good. You might be wondering, Drongo, why is it going to be good? Well, you're going to be able to queue up for free for all, and you're going to be able to play against other people, real people, and you're not going to have to go into a custom lobby. You're not going to have to download a mod. It's very, very simple. You just you just do. You just live your life. You click the button, and you queue up. So I'm excited about it. I hope, I'm hoping you're excited about it, but I don't want this to just be a happy video where we talk about free for all and have ourselves a great time because, unfortunately... That's not what, what's happening here, ladies and gentlemen. No, I, I need your help. I need you guys to get on the horn because I, I have received confirmation from behind the scenes that the developers are not working on uh, caster, caster mode, caster, whatever you want to call it, caster mode at all. Uh, our replay functionality as it currently exists, that this is it, okay? And I just want to remind you of, of what we've got, okay? Because I want to... I, before I do that, I want to sell you on a vision, okay? Because right now, we have got, in the next patch, in about seven days, Season 7 will begin. And with that is going to be the beginning of a new era for Age of Empires 4. I know that a lot of the content I do is competitive. It's 1v1 stuff. But my genuine plan is to just start casting a lot of FFA games. And part of that is the viewing experience, not just for myself, but for you guys as viewers as well. So take a look at the UI, have a look at what we've got right here, and let's have a look at the information. What do we see? We see that we've got civilizations on the right, we've got scores, we've got the ages, and we've got the names of people. We've also got in our, we've got our mini-map down here in the bottom right-hand corner, and in the top left-hand corner, have a look at the size of this bad boy. Jeez, that's, that's big, isn't it? We can see current resources. That's pretty much it. Now, what else can you see? We can also see income per minute. Okay, sure. Uh, and we can also see military, which, by, by the way, this uh, this is bugged. Uh, we can see the player score again. Okay. Uh, we can see the landmarks tracker. So if, if you guys want me to track how many landmarks we've got, uh, we can track that one. Uh, we can also track wonders, uh, if players have got wonders and how long that they've got, uh, and sacred sites as well. So as you can see, uh, not only is this UI incredibly ugly, big, uh, probably smells bad as well, it's not very functional. It is not functional at all. It doesn't give us the information. I, I'm going to quickly alt-tap. I'm just going to remind you what Outback Octagon looks like. This is for Outback Octagon 2. This is the UI that we had. Have a look at that. That was the UI that we had in the top of your screen. You've got how much income each individual player has, as well as how much how many resources they've got. You've got their population. You've got their military, uh, their eco breakdown, how many relics they've got, and you can see which units they've got available as well. Now, you might be wondering, but Drongo, why are you getting on the blower right now? Why are you asking us for assistance? You know, wh what's changed? I thought you were going to be doing this whole thing where you're going to be hacking the game. Well, the reality is we can't actually hack the game anymore. I mean, you can still hack the game. But the, the hack that we were planning on using was the same hack. And, and when I say hack, I'm talking a genuine hack, like a genuine bona fide electrified hack, okay, uh, that was used uh, originally for N4C. If you guys remember, Nilly's Apartment Cup was for Age of Empires 4. And they had a guy back there who was doing the UI. 
or the overlay. He was known as the overlay guy. Anyway, uh, that guy developed, uh, in conjunction with, with Koosh, um, a, a hack, basically. It's, it's, it's called DLL Injection, where they inject uh, code into the game, and then that reveals the information of all the players in the game, and then they can put an overlay over the top of that. Basically, we can't do that anymore. Um, and so what that means is that we're not going to be able to cast FFA games with a decent UI. The only UI we're going to be able to have is this one, this bare bones one. And... I've been thinking outside the box a little bit, just to explain a little bit more, as we've got our first age up here in the middle of the map coming through from Averly. Uh, so this is what it will look like. Uh, th this right here. So it, it's it's very, very simple. We've got a player. Uh, and, and so basically the way that this works is we're quite literally just taking off different monitors, this right here, the current resources and the income per minute, we're taking that and then we're pulling this individual section of the screen and then we're putting it to a different part of my screen. And I'm actually gonna need three computers to do that, which is fine, now, it's not an issue. It's just that ideally we could have a functional UI. So this is where you guys come in. I've been told by, by somebody pretty high up that they've said, look, we, we know it's a priority, but unfortunately World's Edge is where the limit is. Um, and so I'm gonna be asking you guys to help me out wherever it is that you post, whether it's on Reddit, whether it is on the official forums, I'm gonna leave a link in the description to my post. And I want you to get in there, upvote it, leave a comment there, encouraging support and basically giving us free for all overlay or free for all spectator mode. Because at the moment, what we've got is just it, it's not really conducive to a pleasurable viewing experience. So I hope that I've explained myself well. Uh, I, I would love to go ahead and try and solve this problem by myself and with the community. As I said, I, I have sp I've actually spoken, and this is kind of funny, the, the guy who, you know the map hacks, right? How, the, how there's heaps of map hacks, uh, or heaps of people map packing. The guy that made the map hack, uh, I, I'm, I've got him on friends on Discord and we're talking. I'm like, hey man, what do you, you reckon you can help me out with this? He's like, yeah, I can try. Uh, and then he came, came back to me. He's like, unfortunately, like we, we, we can't do anything. He's like, if you want some map packs, I can do that for you, but uh, I can't do anything else. Um, he, he's got some other stuff as well, but obviously when it comes to um, to, to helping me out with that, it, he, he said that there wasn't anything that he could do, which sucks. Um, so it means that we're going to have to fall back on, on the on the good old option of, of asking the developers uh, for assistance. So... I'll leave it there. Hopefully I painted the vision for you. Let's get into the game because I've heard that this one is an absolute banger. Have a look at this spawn, by the way. Can we just talk about Baltoon? Can we talk about how all by himself he is right now? Now, an another thing to note is that with the new FFA mode that's going to be coming through, if I remember correctly, I, I think it's called Dominion. I'm not 100% sure, so don't hold me to that. Um, one of the things is that you do have King. So it's basically like Outback Octagon. This is an Outback Octagon. Uh, this mode is just the standard FFA mode. Obviously, the boys are out here preparing for FFA. They know what's going to be happening. Keep in mind, we are going to have a ladder as well for FFA. To be honest, like th this is kind of my hope, and I don't know if the devs are on the same team as me for this one, but if Quick Search or Quick Match FFA goes well, I, I want there to be ranked FFA. Can you imagine how good that will be? The technically, Quick Match will be ranked, but to be honest, I don't know how serious people are going to take it. And when I say that, I'm not talking about uh, the, the... the you, you guys know the, the, the Chinese teams that do like the win trading and they've got 3,500 points in Quick Match. Is that is that going to be a dead zone of arc? No, it's not. Uh, so... Um, a little bit, little bit of inside information. Um, so w with regard to the way that um, FFA is going to work, you'll actually be able to queue up with friends. Uh, and I mean, I'm curious what you guys think about that. You know, is, is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? If, you know, if, if me and Don Artie and Beastie and Marine Lord all queue up together and play a free-for-all game together because that, that's the way that it works, right? Like, I, I get into a free-for-all game and I'm, I'm there by myself. No, I, I'm there with ev all of my friends that I queued up with. So is that a good thing? In my opinion, it's not really. Um, but then at the same time, could you imagine if they didn't have that and then like people were dodging because there's eight players in, in the game and you know they want to try and get their friends and now they're dodging. And But I wonder, once again, that, that's like a symptom of another problem. And I, I don't want to turn this into, oh my God, we got ourselves a fast castle coming through from Mr. Munch. Have a look at this. We're going to pick up some early relics. This is a good time as well. Not to mention the fact that this is just an FFA. So he's, he's taken some time to actually get out on the board here. But uh, this is a pretty, pretty... Fast timing here. We'll look, we'll start to look picking up relics. Uh, so definitely a nice little spot. I'm, I'm going to put my money on Averly being the first one knocked out though. Like this is probably the worst position here in the middle of the map. You you have got so many neighbors and you just don't want that. And have a look at this though. Corb doing the right thing, beginning to move and migrate away over towards this east side. Definitely the right call uh, moving away from from uh, those, those people that are closer to him. 
Let's check in on Beastie. How's, how's my boy Beastie doing? He's doing not too bad. He's got the Chamber of... Com the, the, he's got the cop going, the Chamber of Commerce. Definitely uh, a bit of a memer. Uh, testing the waters. I'm suspecting he's probably going to be throwing a market down here in the corner. Baltoon probably not going to be liking that too much. Now, baltoon has got an insane spawn. Can we just say, like, when it comes to favorites for winning this game, Baltoon just... Uh, by the point that he is all the way in the corner here, it's, it's insanely good for him. But some things to note. Now, as I mentioned before, with regard to um, Dominion. So, Dominion, you, you have a king in that mode. That's going to be the official FFA mode in quick match. You will have a king, and if, if you kill a, an enemy king, that's going to give you 50 population, and it will also eliminate the player immediately. It's the exact same thing uh, as Outback Octagon. So this kind of favors Baltoon in the sense that the kings aren't in this game mode that we're currently watching right now. And as a result, it basically means that he doesn't really lose anything just by turtling here, right? Uh, if we think about it from the perspective of you know, is is that is it a good thing or is it a bad thing to have him have that? I mean, it, I guess it depends on your opinion. But one of the things that it does promote if you don't have that is this kind of behavior where you just want to kind of chill at the bottom or the side and just hope that no one picks a fight with you because, uh, well, everyone's got 200 population, right? That's the big difference. Sacred Sight's going to start getting picked up here by Averly in the middle. It's going to be a tough position for him. Uh, to be honest, Mr. Munch is probably in a bit of a tough spot as well. He's got one, two, three, four, five neighbors, I guess, technically. And we hear Joan going down somewhere on the map. I don't know where it was. I think it was Beastie's Joan, was it? Yeah, it ha well, it had to be Beastie's Joan. That's the, it's the only... It's, it's the only Joan in... I'm the only Joan in the village. Indeed, she is. All right, we've got ourselves a little bit of water out here as well. Uh, neither player on the water looking to really contest each other. Definitely makes sense when it comes uh, to these free-for-all games. And have a look at this. We've got ourselves a quad barracks beginning to come down. So I suspect we might have Baltoon looking to do some cheeky snipes here uh, on, on, the, on the town centers. Uh, and uh, I guess just another thing to note, um, when it came to Outback Octagon, because I'm, I'm sure there might be some questions still about the, the earlier things that I said. When it came to Outback Octagon, uh, th what, the way that that worked is we actually used a mod um, to do that. So if you wanted to, um, or if, if we wanted to cast those games, we actually had to have it played on a mod. And so the, the reason why I am just, I, I know I probably should have mentioned this earlier, but I, I forgot, I just remember now. So the reason why I'm, I'm pushing for, for this is because I just want to be able to cast community games. I, I just want to be able to, to you know, I, I get so many messages, emails from people like, hey, Drongo, I played an insane FFA game. You should check it out. I would love to actually be able to check that out and have a decent viewing experience and, you know, a decent viewing experience for you guys as well. Uh, whereas, like, that, that's obviously not something that, that is really possible at the moment. Nice little relic coming through here. He could he could heal the Scholar. He should be healing the Scholar. Heal the Scholar! No, Averly. Don't, and now he's going to try... Ah, Averly. You could have you had that, Averly. That could have been yours. Now, uh, Kor could look to potentially snipe this out. We do see more Sipahi coming through. Has the Mosque out. We'll be looking to get some Imams pushing forward. A couple of Vils up towards that top side. Wallalol. Wallalol. Mr. Munch. GG, he's far away picking up these relics, isn't he? Heals come through for Mr. Munch. These relics are really far away. And have a look at the palace guard. So we've just got ourselves a one, one TC boom. But I mean, technically it's not one TC. You've got all of these fishing boats that are out here as well. Beastie now going to be throwing down a defensive keep as well. Looking to keep himself alive. Meanwhile, towards that east side, we've got ourselves a bit more action beginning to unfold. Lancers going to have to fall back. And you can feel with uh, with Corvinus now beginning to push in on that top side. It's only a matter of time until Averly starts experiencing uh, issues. Let's put it that way. Anyway, we'll uh, we'll ride on board here. Let's uh, let's let's check in with Baltoon. I want to see how he's doing uh, down here, just because this position is just so good. I guess one of the interesting things is typically you do see like two TC Song Dynasty as the the play style in FFA, especially when you've got a spawn like this where you're all away. But the fact that he's got water, just I don't think you really need that, right? You don't need the second TC. Obviously later he'll want the second TC, but early on I think this is all you need having this and you want to try and translate this into into a victory and, and this is definitely the way to do it into um, food heavy units let's check in on that north side it looks like don arty is going to be going to imperial age throwing down the bark shear now keep in mind there is no king in this mode or, or monarch I, I, can i just say i like that they called it a monarch so that it's like it's uh you know it's it's gender neutral it's uh it's, it's 2024 right like it's not the king it's got to be a monarch uh, <laughs> i thought that was very funny um but uh yeah we got the age up coming through Despite there not being a Monarch, Don's still going to play it safe and go for the Barkshire up towards the north. Probably could have lo looked for it a little bit more aggressively, but yeah, I think I think that's absolutely fine. Let's check in on that south side, though. I think if, if I was to talk about... Um, 
things that I'd want in like a in a spectator mode as well because I don't think we did it perfectly in Outback Octagon. In fact, I'd, I'd encourage you guys if you've got any suggestions for a spectator mode to put them in there because I, I will compile them. I, I will include it in there uh, because essentially, as I said at the moment, like World's Edge are not putting foot or putting any any feet forward at all with regard to Age of Empires 4's caster mode. Uh, it, it is non-existent. The, the spectator mode, it is not a priority for them. I don't, I don't know what their priorities are, but I, I just know that that's not a priority for them. So for us us to actually get that on their radar, we're going to have to make some noise. So that's that's why we're going to do what we're doing. But Beastie now going to be aging up. Beautiful position on this red palace as well. This is going to buy him so much space in that central location. And now Baltoon sensing that, hold on a minute, I could have a kill in the middle here. Could be looking to pick up a couple of points. I'm just kidding. That's not what happens. You don't get points in this game mode. Well, the way that it's going to work in the, in the free-for-all game mode that's going to be happening is only the winner gets points. And that, that kind of it worries me a little bit, but it, it does make sense, I think. Um, because, well, at the end of the day, you don't want to be playing for second place. You want to be playing for first place. Um, and maybe that's something that we can take to Outback Octagon 3 if and when it gets announced. Because I know that that's been another thing that a lot of uh, questions that have, have been posed about, asked about. Uh, I, I will tell you now that it, it's uh, it's in the works. I don't have anything concrete just yet. That, that's, another, <laughs> that's another World's Edge thing. <laughs> Averly just going to tap out, unfortunately. He's going to be going the way of the Dodo. Rest in peace, Averly. It was, it, was, it, was nice. it was nice watching you for 16 minutes. But unfortunately, he got the middle of the map. And, uh, well, I, I guess he, he uh, made his bed. And uh, now he's sleeping. It sucks. It sucks to lose this early. But it looks like he's going to try and pinch the relics because there's going to be three relics in here so he's going to be able well, there's the fourth one as well so he's going to be able to secure these keep in mind he will have access to pagodas uh we do see the shaolin monks going to be on the way here uh now i've got no idea how many relics we've got it looks like just the one for the moment we'll check in over for the other players so it doesn't look like core's got any over here uh who else was going for them we, we had mr munch who was going for them as well he's got three and a fourth one just chilling out here just holding it uh, but those relics now going to be picked up. Have a look at this. Corvin is just going to be stealing away a relic right under the nose of Baltoon. Jeez, Baltoon. Jeez, mate. Jeez, Louise. Anyway, let's check in with Beastie. Look at Beastie's base. What an absolute beast of a base. Uh, I'm, I'm loving this. this. This is the ultimate defensive uh, position. Now, keep in mind, he's playing Joan of Arc. He's not playing as the French, so you don't get any of those keep bonuses uh, in your AoE around you. Uh, but you do, of course, get that Consecrate bonus. And we can see right here, he is going to be... Look, he's consecrated the uh, Siege Workshop, uh, but yet to pick up that extra little bit. I think it's... Where is it? I don't know exactly where it is. I think it's a unique tech somewhere. Uh, it, I, I thought I saw it in the keep. Wait, do I have to... I, I think I have to hover over Beastie. Give me a sec here. Yeah. Nope, that's not it. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Anyway, where's the action? Where's the action at? Feels like everyone's just chilling out for the moment. We'll check in with with uh, with Beastie and see how he's doing. Uh, Joan's still level two at this stage, so still got a way to go up towards that north side. Don is continuing to push out. Don's another sleeper, I think. This is, you know, typically we see Don being quite aggressive, but I guess on the English it makes sense for him to just boom up and play the late game. He's got some of the best hand cannoneers in the in the game, uh, especially in 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 this matchup, right, where you've got no China. Uh, your hand cannoneers are incredible. So that's always a big factor. But now the, the age up going to be coming through as well for Corvinus. Throws down the Barkshire Palace very aggressively placed here. We'll be looking to pick up that last relic now. Baltoon going to be able to snipe it. And that's going to guarantee he's got gold for the rest of the game. That's going to be feeling very good. That is for sure. But now Baltoon. Baltoon also reaching the Imperial Age. Jeez, everyone, everyone's going up. And it's going to be the Temple of the Sun. Um, I'm kind of curious to see how Juicy Legacy stack up in this position here. Um, because we've got two Juicy Legacy players. So Mr. Munch, he's he's right in the pocket. How many vills is he on? I, I want to take a look because he is on the 2TC. Well, to, to see how many vills he's on, I have to, to rotate to him. And then we, we have to hover over this. So he's on 63 vills. But see, the thing is, I don't even know where that is compared to other players. And that, that's one of the things, right? Like, I'm just going to tab back in right now and just show you, you know, up here we could say, okay, well, he's on 12 vills compared to the nine vills of Faye. You know, like, it, it was very easy for us to to compare the pair whereas here it's a bit like oh you know we could just cycle through okay 65 uh, 100 for don Artie, 77 for beastie 82 for dragavan 81 for uh Corvinus, 87 for core and 91 for baltoon averly has got none and mr munch is on 65 so despite being on 2tc he's actually pretty low on that village account you, you can see that that was a fair bit of work right uh, that wasn't easy that wasn't pretty but uh, i guess i guess we're making it work there are other ways that we can get the data. So I've been talking with uh, Cow behind the scenes, and he reckons that we should just make every player stream their perspective. 
Now, that works for Outback Octagon. It doesn't really, but, you know, we, we could make that work for Outback Octagon. But as I said, uh, my, my vision is more about... Oh, this is not... This is not... This, is, this isn't part of the vision. I'll say that much, Don. Uh, but my vision is more to just be able to go into any free-for-all game and just cast it and actually have the ability to see things in there. Uh, that, that is, that's my dream. Uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes, though. Anyway, uh, let's check in over on that north side. Is Don once again going to throw down another town center? Don, is four TCs not enough for you? You've got the two together with the King's Palace and a fourth one in the back. But on that south side, compare that to Baltoon, who is not sitting on more than... Oh, no, he does have the second TC. Elite Palace Guards now coming through. I wonder who, who whose Palace Guards are better. I feel like the Chinese Palace Guards are better, right? Because Chinese Palace Guards have Battle Hardened, which is the extra 30 health. Whereas you don't get that as the Juicy Legacy. But with the Juicy Legacy, you do get the extra movement speed from the Temple of the Sun. Uh, even though you, with Yuan Dynasty, you get that as well. Um, but you also have the ability to get uh, Ming Dynasty, which gives unique units... Uh, extra, I think it's extra health, if I remember correctly. And it's quite a bit. So I, I don't actually know how that goes, but have a look at this. We got ourselves a, a pink on purple. Things are starting to get tough. Beastie losing a lot of villagers. The keep will get online. He's going to try and focus down the mangoes here. Keep in mind, the mangoes do a fair bit of damage. Beastie able to, to get them up. And we see the villagers now coming out behind things. The cannon's going to be here as well. Vil's going to have to jump inside. Joan's going to run up. He's going to hit at point blank. Trebuchet also comes out. Almost certain this keep is going down. No two ways about it. He's got to be careful not to lose the cannon as well. Meanwhile, towards the south side, Beastie could face... Oh, it's gone the worst way possible with Beastie tapping out at the 21 minute mark. Unfortunate, but I guess he just knew that there's pressure on the south side as well, and it's only a matter of time. He needed to win this fight, right? Like, he needed this keep to come up and he needed to it, it to hold for him the problem is dragavan playing as the ottomans is just pumping right now you know he's having a good game he's on two tcs he's living his best life 98 vils so he, the eco is absolutely kicking big farming economy is coming through and of course he's just got those free units that are going non-stop can't wait for them to get nerfed let's 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 throw one of those comments in for the ottoman bots thanks guys now did beastie have any relics i don't think that he did yeah you also had stone on the uh on on the guild hall 1260 you hate to see it, but I, I think at the end of the day, this is one of those things where going for the Chamber Co of Commerce, it's a nice meme. Uh, acts as a market, trains one free trader for each economic technology research. It's like, it's it's a cool meme, but it, it's just one of those things where going for the School of Cavalry, even in a free-for-all, just buys you so much space. Because if you're slightly ahead of somebody, it means you can translate that to a massive lead. Uh, but uh, Elite Spears, together with the Palace Guards, now going to be coming through. Baltoon going to be looking to stampede over the top of his opponent's base. Dragovan now going to be forced back, but you can see he's got that difficult position up against the combo here. The, the spear uh, palace guard combo is difficult because you've got to try and micro out the spears while the knights are on the front. Now, when it comes to the knights, he doesn't have that biology upgrade just yet. Let's check in over on that east side. Obviously, we've got ourselves a fight, but I just want to make sure we're not missing any others. There are so many fronts that are beginning to build over here. Look at, look at the way that they're all walling across that top side of the map. There are walls everywhere. They're just segmenting out that northern island. You know, I'm going to be honest. This map kind of reminds me a bit of... Uh, do you guys remember? I think it was in Outback Octagon 2. I remember Divine DFP. I think it was in the left corner. Was it Divine DFP? Dragovan surrenders as well. He's going to go the way of the Dodo. That's three Dodos we've got this game. We'll ride back on board with Baltoon for the moment. Sacred Sites are going to be looking to be picked up here. But I remember there was a game. It was, I think, I want to say Vortex, Divine DFP, and who was the third one? I'm, I'm sure you guys will remember. But basically, there, there was a map where this kind of thing happened, where you can't traverse it uh, by land all the way around. There was only water, and it ma made, like, this big C shape, the kind of the same reverse, or it's a C. I mean, you just got to rotate it enough. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, it, it made that kind of thing. And that made for a really interesting game as well, uh, because we just had... Was it Wham? I I, I want to say it was like... I'd have to go back and check, but I think it's Divine DFP, Vortex, and Wham. I think that was it, but it, I'm probably wrong about the Wham one. I'm not 100% I'm not confident on that one. Anyways, two Sacred Sites now picked up here for Baltoon. Third one is over towards this east side as well. Now, keep in mind, Don Artie is still just chilling out for the moment. Now, in this game, if we had Kings, Baltoon would have picked up one kill, two kills, three kills. And this would be a massive problem, right? Because now you'd have a player with 150 extra population. So, you know, next week when we're casting the free-for-alls, that is going to be happening. Uh, but 
You know, you know what? I just thought of something. If if you're happy with with how this caster mode is, also please let me know. Because if, if this is good enough for you guys, then that's absolutely fine. I I, I will just cast with this. I, I guess for me though, I'm always aspiring to have you know the best viewing experience possible, uh, not just for your sake but for my sake as well, right? Like I, I like watching games. Uh, Balton is absolutely going beast mode right now. This is ludicrous. Dude, he is going wild. Is it all this, just this fishing economy? What, what has he even got going on right now? Hold on, can I just quickly check? Baltoon's 125 bills off two TCs. This is kind of wild when you think about it. 216 health on the palace guards. Is that with Ming Dynasty? Yeah, that's with Ming Dynasty. No, wait, Ming Dynasty. Hold on, so that, that's with uh, M Elite Army Tactics. So that they get an extra 15% damage. So to be honest, I kind of prioritize the health over the damage. Actually, no. I think, hold on. Maybe damage is better than health. Yeah, damage actually is better than health. Now that I think about it, damage is better he than health. You want to know why? Damage is better he better than health because with palace guards, you don't really care if they die. You just want them to do damage because you want to trade them all the time in the late game because you've got an insane economy. Look at this. We're talking about 3.3k coming through right now. Dude, Baltoon is literally just cleaning up. He's, he's taking out three people already. It is just palace guard power right now. We've got some hand cannoneers. Actually, that's not a hand cannon. Dude, why does it look like a hand cannon here? It looks like he's holding a hand cannon. Look at that. Hold on, hold on. Stop swinging. Look at look at the stat difference between these. Plus nine. Plus nine versus plus two. That's crazy. That's elite army tactics and that Ming Dynasty bonus. Did, did we lose? Did we lose the palace? Not the palace. Did we lose the, uh, the whatchamacallit? I think we did. Oh, we got ourselves another push coming in. It's Janissary timing coming through from Core. Four mangoes on the back. Double bombard as well. He's looking to try and take out Corvinus here. There are plenty of units in here. Glad that he's remembered his meta. I tell you what, I was playing the Ottomans and I forgot my meta and I was like, ah, oh, I can't believe I did that. This is the main town center. If it goes down, there might be a landmark knockout on the cards. Unfortunately, the defense is looking pretty decent here. So Cole might have to head back to the drawing board, but you never know in these FFA game, in these FFA games, brother. Um, Corvin is normally the type of guy to, to try and fight though. How is he going to deal with this siege though on the backside? Meanwhile, M Mr. Munch, he could be tapping out any second. Look at, dude, look at Baltu, dude. He just does not care at this stage of the game. Landmark does go down. That's going to be the Landmark TC. One, two. Where's the third? It's already gone down. It's the Barkshire. Oh, we, we, we are totally going to have a Landmark knockout right here. There's no way he can stop this. The third Bombard's out as well. I mean, does he have springs or anything? There's, there's no Springles at the back. No Siege Workshop. No nothing. Relics getting sniped away as well. Keep in mind, these were the relics that were stolen from Averly in the middle of the map. The ones that Kor was fighting him over earlier. Beast mode is happening. Can I just say, like, it feels like the Palace Guard is the king of FFA. Is this unit the best FFA unit that there is? Like, I know the Fire Lance is pretty good, but it does get countered by Spears. I think the good thing about Palace Guards is it doesn't get countered by anything. And I, I say that unironically. Like, the, the most effective counter to Palace Guards is, like, maybe Samurai. That's pretty much it. Other than, oh, we've got our, that's another surrender that comes in right there. That's going to be Corvin is surrendering. And we've got ourselves a double surrender. Mr. Munch also going to give up. The only person who really stands a chance here is Don Arty. Now, one thing to note is that if this was the FFA rules that we've got next week coming through, Baltoon would be sitting on an extra 50, 100, 150, 200 population. And you would have Core who would be sitting on an extra 50 and Don Arty who would just be chilling on 200. But the good news for Don Arty is he's been hanging out for 28 minutes. He's been biding his time. And now he's ready to break out of his shell. It's just like that episode, not episode, just like that movie, High School Musical. We're breaking free! Sorry, that was totally off key. <laughs> I think that's probably too high for me to do. All I remember is the meme. Have you seen the meme? Just Google breaking free bridge. Oh, that is beautiful, dude. <laughs> Let me spoil it for you. Let me spoil it for you. All, all I remember is there's a guy somewhere and a bridge and there's a boat and he tries to break free and the bridge very quickly reminds him that, that he is but a human and the bridge is a bridge. You know, you've heard the, the famous saying, bitch, I'm a bus. Well, in this, in this case, it was similar, but it was a bridge. Don now beginning to move up, looking to push up all of these, all of these uh, outposts. So looking to try and gain some line of sight. There are relics here. He's going to look to pick them up. 
ideally what he would do is just look to throw down a mosque or a monastery right here. Just makes it easier to, to usher them backwards. Actually, he's got them pretty close. This is absolutely fine. I think these might be fresh. Yeah, they are definitely fresh. <laughs> he's got plenty of ills beginning to move up here. Now, Don's sitting on 20,000 food, which is absolutely plenty. The only issue he's going to have is gold, but doing the right thing. Now, I want to see if he's looking to pick up upgrades as well. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We've got a delete coming through. He's deleted the Sapahi. He's going to be moving in. Oh, core. Oh, dude, I totally forgot how good Ottomans are in the late game. Like, you could just spam great bombards and your opponent can't do anything. Except palace guards. Palace guards always win. Dude, I I'm looking I'm looking on the shore. I'm like, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Where are the palace guards and why can't I see them on the map? Okay, all right. They're back. They're back here. Can we... Let's just check in with Baltoon here. Baltoon's rocking a pretty decent economy. Still 125 vils. Let's compare that over to Core. So the three musketeers that remain here, all very even economies. 129, 125, and I think Don had 125 as well. Hold on, let me, let me check with him. Yeah, 120. So very, very even economies here. Uh, has picked up that... Oh, hasn't picked up Copulation just yet. Such a good upgrade, especially when you've got massive amounts of gold like this. Plenty of gold in, in this central location. He's going to look to try and push out with outposts. Definitely the right call. Tight Barn's now going to be coming through for Don as well. Lots of production on the back. Wants to try and bring that production forward the same way that Baltoon has done here. Check in and have a look at with Core. And Core's going to be doing the same thing now. Oh, Don Artie could be in trouble. That's 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 a lot of bombards. I, I remember... I, I don't remember the game. All I remember is the thumbnail. And it was Beastie. <laughs> and Beastie had like 40 bombards, dude. Oh, gosh. That, man, FFA is by far the best game mode. I don't care what the haters say. I don't care if you're a 1v1 pro player who wins hundreds of thousands of dollars in the gold league okay ffa is the best game mode don't at me like and that's just objective right more more chaos equals more fun and more fun equals better speaking of better that is a cool have i got that i want that that is cool Avery, what is that like a, a gold a chest of gold i don't mind it carrick now gonna be coming out for core have a look at this he's just got it on patrol sitting on the corner this has got decent range on it as well. We've got nine tiles of range. Hopefully this gets fixed up. Can you see how they've got all of these uh, separate attacks that are all like one, two, three, four, five, six? It should just be 54 cannon, 70 versus building, nine tiles of range, and then it should be times six. That's how it should be because you've got six of those weapons. All right. Well, a little bit of a stall out here at this stage. Where do we go from here? Now, I guess drops could be an option. But when you're dealing with Baotun playing as the Chinese, there's a lot... Oh, is he doing it? I think I think he's going for a delete. So th the idea is really simple. You delete all of your villages and you max out your army. And then once your army dies, you just replace your villages. So the more TCs that you have, the better, uh, because then you can replace your villages faster. And so th there's no real point for him to go up to this many. Has he deleted his army? Oh, interesting. He's deleted his army and he's going into villages instead. Okay. So maybe he just knows that if we check in with the positioning here, he knows roughly where Don Artie is, I think. And keep in mind, they would be talking throughout this game. Speaking of which, can we just talk about the fact that we can't have, we can't see in-game chat? Now, I guess another thing to note is you can hear in-game chat, but you can't see it. I haven't heard any messages be sent just yet. So maybe they're not talking to each other. I don't think they'd be in a Discord call, even though these guys are all friends. Great use of Imperial Official out here. This, this is a high value Imperial Official usage over here. Uh, I encourage many many of you guys. Exactly, exactly this. This is what you want. This is, this is the stuff right here of dreams. Anyway, village account is going to continue to rise. Now, as long as his production rises with it, I think that's fine. How much production does he have? So he's only got 15 barracks, which means that he would need to do, you know, six rounds of a palace guard to max out. So 17 seconds times six, that's not a lot, right? So he, he is really relying on Core and Don Adi taking each other out in this situation. Now looking to throw down a few mining camps as well, looking to expand out here. Now we can see that uh, he's going after stone. Oh, he's going for a wonder. Okay, all right. That was a bit slow, Drongo. That's okay. You should have had the, uh, the current resources up, uh, which... Forge oh my god. Oh. <laughs> oh, we got the Ottomans back. Oh, we got the Ottomans back, baby. Yep. Ottomans are perfectly down. He just deleted 70 vil 50 vils here. He's like, look, look, he can't get through. I'm just I'll, I'll just clear out a little bit of a path. There, there we go, there we go. There's 18 great bombards. Alright. 18 naked 
bombards in the back of a shed. In, is it in the back of a shed or is it? It's in the showers, isn't it? See, it just goes to show you my, 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 uh, my meme knowledge. It's just not that. <laughs> this is ludicrous. Is he fully maxed on these? He's just, he's making Sapahi and bombards. That's it. All right. Well, core, he's pushing forward. Now, one thing to note is core also has a very immobile army. Um, so if, if his opponent looks to try and do a landmark snipe, that is definitely going to be on the cards. Now, Don's going to be losing bills here, and he's not going to like it. But keep in mind, Don has got plenty of resources in the bank and can very easily replace that. Not to mention he's got 23. I, I like Don with the single sprinkled in queues. Like, yep, this, this right here, this is going to be what solves my problem. Uh, Don. 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 Don, we got to We got to talk, Don. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, he coming. <laughs> is this one? This one's going on the thumb now, baby. There you go. FFA is so back. Oh, it's beautiful. Don't you love to see it? Oh, I love to see it. You, you don't get this in 1v1. I mean, you do. You get it in 2v2 sometimes. You guys remember that game? Let's, can we just check in with Baltoon? I, I think if ba Baltoon should do the right thing um, to win this game, he needs to wait for Core to kill Donati. Otherwise, what's going to happen is... Core is going to turn his army around and he's going to hold hands with Don Hardy as they try and kill Baltoon. Because 15 minutes is a long time for that wonder. Whew. All right. And I guess that's another thing to note is that in going for that, or, or the, the way that it's set, like uh, where you don't get points for kills and you don't get points for, you know, second or third or anything like that, you just get points for winning. It does definitely incentivize holding that wonder until the very end because you don't want to, you don't want your opponent to, to look the other way. And, and potentially target you. Now, Meta Arm's going to be moving around the back. He has not got them in formation. These guys are going to get eaten alive. And we can see the hand cannon is looking to tee off towards that front line as well. But the Meta Arms need to come in right here. They need to get into the middle. Otherwise, these bombards over on the right, left side will clean them up. And that's exactly what we see happening. There's barely any way that we can see into there. But all I can tell you right now is there are no Men at Arms left. And this unit is a perfectly balanced... Uh, I like the Springles out. Does he have roller shutter triggers? He's got roller shutter triggers. Of course he's got roller shutter triggers, Drongo. Come on, who do you think he is? He's the Don. He knows about roller shutter triggers. Slow push rolling through here. Meanwhile, Baltoon, the entire time, he's on 194 villagers, just pumping. He's got plenty of resources here. As soon as he sees that elimination, it's not even going to be a question. Now you can see the power of those great bombards as the men at arms try and come through here. But Don, unfortunately, just fighting directly into his opponent isn't how you play against Ottomans. You want to try and come in from every angle against them and look to try and surround. Springwood's doing a decent job. He's got good numbers here, but he needs to get them in the right formation. At the moment, you can see how they're stacking up. The back is trying to fire. They've got 12 range. The front, they've also got 12 range, but to, to fire off, you can see they're really struggling and now looking to push up, able to pick off that first one. The meta arms now coming forward. He's going to have to fall back away from the meta arms. Don playing it well. How many resources does he have in the bank? He's got plenty of resources. Oh my God. He's got plenty of resources in the bank here. Enough for another 170 men at arms. He's just going to focus the landmarks instead. Second landmark is going to be up for grabs right here. Keep in mind that that final landmark is all the way in the back of the base. So Don should be okay from that perspective. Men at arms cleaning up reinforcements and have a look at core as he continues to pump through. We can see he's got lots of resources in the bank. Plenty of units continuing to come across the map. But remember, you don't want to let that... Oh, oh, look at this. Look at this. He's actually going to do it. Core. Now, surrender. What? Why does he surrender? Because Don Don held. Expect to see the, the one to come down any second now. Where is it? There it is. There's the one. <laughs> yep. There it is. All right. Well, Don actually held. I'm I'm going to I'm not going to lie right now. I thought Don was dead. Dude, I was I was so confident Don was dead. That was an impressive hold right there. I mean, did he delete Vils? He didn't really del delete Vils. Like, I think he just lost Vils, right? But now Men at Arms going to be making their way across the map. And at this stage, if we take a look at Baltoon's resource bank, he can just delete every villager and just fill out, you know, full palace guards here and just spam into his opponent. Now, you don't want to delete every single villager. By the way, have a look at the amount of gold he's got. He's got so much gold back here. This is this is insane how good of a spawn he got. It wasn't really the sport. It was just, the, you know, it's the luck of the draw when it comes to these kind of things. Um, in, in that you're all, all on your lonesome, all by yourself down here. No one else managed to spawn with you because it very much could have been the case 
that one villager that was down here, you know, from, I don't know, Mr. Munch or something like that, built a town center here. And now all of a sudden, you, you've got two players right next to each other. And they ruin each other's game. Now Don going to be pushing forward. Springlets aren't really going to be able to achieve much. But keep in mind, we do see Bombards beginning to come out from Baltoon here. So we are down to the four. Free for all is so back, dude. Ah, yes. The good old days of free for all are back. Isn't this so beautiful? When th There is something about seeing five layers of stone walls getting prepared to be built. That just... Makes me a little bit excited. <laughs> like you, you are not getting through these with Springles, my friend. You are going to need bigger guns than this. And that's the thing, unfortunately, for Don. Like, he, he needs to bring Vils forward and he needs to start the forward base. Because remember, the incentive for him <laughs> is to surrender. Don just says, I can't do it. I can't do it. There's no way I can do it. 15 minutes ain't enough, Drongo. I'm just tapping out right here, right now. Anyway, fellas, that's going to be it. Free for all is back. Probably not the best game, but I tell you what, it was still fun to watch. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And make sure you help me out. I'm going to leave those, those links in the comments.